J right in your face. Welcome back to the Fadeaway Podcast, episode number 11. I'm your host, Fadi. I got my boy, Zaid, here with me. Zaid, how you doing, bro? Good, man. It's finally March. Oh. It is finally March. We're coming up on a year since we quarantined for two weeks. I know. I know. A happy two weeks, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they forgot to say 50 before the two, but uh, oh. here we are. In March, time's flying. This yeah. year seems like another year that's going to just zoom by. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you and I were talking, and like, it feels like we haven't stopped talking about basketball in like two years. That's a good thing. That's, that's it's uh, great. Well, we haven't been doing I mean, we it's not the greatest for my home life, but it's, <laughs> it's great for me. I'm enjoying it. I love, uh, I love talking sports, but, uh, What's going on in the in the world? I know you're uh, you're wrapping up tax season, or is not it not even close, bro? No, um, no, we got we got two more months still. Yeah, this guy just months. hopped off a call like two minutes ago, so he's working <laughs> working live right now. So uh, it's busy time, bro. Busy, busy, busy season, time, huh? busy season, man. What can I do? Uh, yeah. But always got time for this for the and, league and, and, and for and for the Raptors. So um, not a great week for the Raptors. Um, it got cut short. It got cut short, so they, the the game yesterday got postponed. Yeah, the Sunday um, night, Chicago. Sun, yeah, so um, most likely, as I read on Twitter, that most likely Tuesday, is Detroit gonna is going to get postponed. It makes sense. Well. It makes sense. Oh, that that last game in in uh, against Houston shouldn't have been played. Probably when you really look back at it, like I mean, Philly's still out there playing games, and they played against Philly when uh, Pascal, I think, sat out. Who so. knows what the rules are anymore on the on the COVID stuff, man? Who Not knows? me. Who knows exactly? But the Raptors, the Raptors Amy. went one and two this week. Uh, they lost their second game against the Sixers um, off that little mini series, game two of that mini series. Series they lost against the Heat um, on a back to back night. And then they beat the Houston Rockets on that Friday. Yeah. It, was, it was Tuesday, Wednesday, then Friday, a game on Friday. So going one and two, not terrible. I think it could have been better, but... Um, I can't it, knock them. I mean, the thing about it is when you look at weeks and in increments, like you have to also look at the previous week Yeah, and the yeah. week that they had prior and mm-hmm. beating Milwaukee twice and beating Philly uh, the one time. So splitting the season series with the best team in the East, we'll take that. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, even the second game, they played incredible defense on Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Uh, still a fairly large free throw discrepancy in that game. Yeah. Uh, but also came down to the end. It wasn't a it, you know it wasn't a slap by any means. At the end of the game, they, mm-hmm. you know the Raptors do the the fake comeback. They like to give you a little heart attack at the end of games. Uh, and they then, always do that. Yeah. yeah they, have and then, they have to. Yeah. They so were, you can't you can't knock them down. And then second night of a back to back, Miami like. And Miami already has our number as it is. Yeah, and they were healthy or healthier at least. I know Jimmy. They've was been playing, they've so. been healthy and, and playing pretty well lately. Yeah, um, it, like you said, you can't really knock them much on this on uh, when you look at them on on the week. I guess because they they did win four straight the week before, so they're coming off that. So they're so they're five in their last seven games really. If you look at it like, from the, from that perspective, so it just depends how you look at it. Um, a couple of things though that that you know were were, were great and. Uh, for the Raptors, I think, you know, Norm Powell has played at an uh, like elite level. Yep. The last maybe bunch of games, 20 games, even, maybe even more. Um, and he's just been starter Norm, and he's been producing every single night. And other than one game during this whole stretch, his production has not been contingent on the production of a Lowry, a Fred Van Vliet, or a Pascal. He's coming out strong, and he's playing strong right away, and he's setting the tone for the team. So... I think if when you really look back at this that, at this week, he had a great second game against Miami. Uh, I think it was, um, and, and and a great game against. So it was a great game against Houston. He had thirty points in thirty three minutes. Mm-hmm. So you know he's going out there. He's making you know use of his time. Thirty three minutes isn't that much. I'm I'm okay with him playing thirty three minutes. That's that's a great you know minute restriction on For him. For sure. Um, but my biggest, you know, issue with the week is lay it on us. Is is the the Raptors' inability to, to call timeouts when there is a run made by the team that's we're sounding like a broken record. It's here. insane. I just that one killed me this week because it happened so many times and it didn't matter if it was Sergio coaching that week or that that game or if mm-hmm. it was Nick Nurse coaching that game. It was like okay, sick. Like the whole coaching staff as a whole has this idea that we're not going to call a timeout yep. even if it's a thirteen point lead evaporated into two points only. So for me, I, it's still that point. And it's still Pascal playing 42 minutes on a night before a back-to-back game. It's like it just better, better balance, better management. I, it's I, I know once you tweak that, it's gonna make a huge difference in how the 
outcomes of the game are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is our boy Ogugwa. Is yeah. that how you say it? Ogugwa? I think so. so. OG yeah. Ananobi? Yeah. He's been uh he's been struggling. Yeah. He's been struggling since he got back, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like we and I guess we were a little bit spoiled because prior to him going out, he had been lights out. Like, he was playing he was carrying, honestly. He was, he was carrying for a bit. Fifty five percent from three, yeah. like <laughs> four to six threes a game. It was just madness. It was mm-hmm. madness. And and over the last five games, like here, I pulled up the stats here. So over the last five games, uh, where is he? The one are these? I, they always give me the advanced. I don't want the advanced, but <laughs> I'll get it in a second. But yeah, he's been. I mean, his shooting has taken relatively a big hit. A big, a big, a big hit, hit. Uh, for compared to uh, what how he's shooting. It's hard to expect this. him to do what he was doing before, but I mean, he's been he's been hurting the last uh, yeah. the last few. So yeah. I'm hoping to see him pick it up. But do you think that he was rushed back? He, do you think because because what is this like Ooh. six five six game leg? Is this is this normal? It shouldn't. I, I feel like I don't know. I don't the first two know. or three games, athlete, for, so. first two or three games, I was giving it to him. Like you know what? Yeah, he, want, he wants to work himself in, but he just doesn't. St- he doesn't look comfortable still. Watching him, watching him play, he doesn't look like he's comfortable doing what he's doing on the court. A lot of his points, honestly, were you know either times where he would just get fed up and and take it to the rim and just literally body people and just use his strength to to finish over them. Um, and a lot of them were just like loose balls, pickups off rebounds, and, and 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 easy finishes for him. He hasn't been really shooting well, so it's been a tough stretch. It just doesn't look comfortable to me when, yeah. I, when I see him play, and it, and it's been in and out. You know, Kyle Lowry's been in and out as well. He missed twelve games, I think it was. It was it was it was a wild amount of games. So I'm not. I, I wouldn't say he's like he's he's rusty or anything at this point i think he's just not comfortable yet in the role he's playing but you have the numbers up i did i pulled it up yeah so he's been putting up 11 a game which is a drop off significantly he was putting up like 18 Mm -hmm. uh he's shooting 31 percent from three yeah it's taking a a huge hit and a really bad rate for me the biggest surprise here is 67 percent from the free throw line (sighs) that to me is a little bit tough Mm mm-hmm that's a lot of that's very low. That's tough. Very low. That's, that's tough. Sixty seven percent from the free throw line is, is a little bit tough. Like you said, he's gonna hopefully start to figure it out, but he has been uh, a little bit slow, kind of a, a non factor offensively. Think Norm's rise and his can you know, his ability to stay at this level how has an effect on him on OG coming back? When he does come like how maybe he, he'll get but like the thing is he's still getting the touches. Yeah. Like, he's still putting up ten shots a game. Yeah, Over the last shooting. five games, he's you shooting. know, so it's and his role, he's not really. You're not asking him to create for himself. Yeah, you're asking him to spot up and shoot the three at different parts of the court, mm-hmm. and he's doing really well. And I saw actually a cool stat. You bring up Norm. Norm is the only player in the league that averages over fifty percent from either corner in the league. Damn, wow, fifty-one percent on either side. So it could be, it could be that. But I think Norm's a better, you know, ball ball playmaker on ball, ball creator handler, yeah, ball handler absolutely. passer absolutely. everything just oh geez like we just need you to, you know he's a decent passer but we need you to not really put it on the floor as much yeah he's getting a little bit better at it i'm not gonna lie to you and and we don't want to just say like hey just stick to the corner uh but he was doing really well at it and 31 percent is just a little bit low yeah uh, especially with kyle lowry out a couple of those games like we need the shooting, you know, you need that shooting, especially when the bench is not really bringing anything. Defensively, he's been really good, though. He's been, he's he's still keeping up his end of his end of the bargain, I guess, on the on the defensive end. But now you give him this new deal, you put that expectation on him that he's going to be a better offensive player. I think Norm, I think Norm is more skilled than him. Yeah, there's no doubt. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I just if if you had put norm skill on og size and yeah. that 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 big that big frame i think would have helped him a lot so og doesn't have that skill so it definitely you don't want to see him putting on the floor um another thing that you, you talk about corner threes the raptors gave up 11 corner threes against the sixers in that on that uh second game of the mini series well, six of them were probably danny green yeah and that was the third time this season to happen mm-hmm. and that was it was 10 plus so that's been the achilles heel for the Raptors time and time again during games, and then also poor shooting. They shot 30% from three in that game in Philly. Uh, to Philly's 45%. So you're, you're, mi- you're minus 15 on the three-point shooting was percentage. That, that was the second game, right? That was so that was the Cork Mons game where yeah. he killed it in the first quarter and he mm-hmm. had like eight threes. Yeah. It was just something ridiculous. Yeah, like, and so these guys always pop off against the Raptors somehow. Of course. It, 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 it's meant to be for them against oh, the Raptors. Oh, if you look at the stats, time. like they held Ben Simmons down, they held Joel Embiid down. Yeah. But then they get killed by Korkmaz. They get mm. killed by the Thibels of the world. You exactly. Know? 
So it's, uh, you know, like we said, we can't really knock him on the week because you got to look at the last couple of weeks in totality. Mm-hmm. And decent, to, you know, it's more than decent to split with uh, the best team in the East. Yeah. And uh, losing to Miami in the second night of a back-to-back. Let's just talk about that a little bit because yeah, Jimmy has our number. Let's call it what it is. Jimmy's, Jimmy's nasty. Jimmy Butler has our number, 27, 10, and 8 with three steals against the Raptors. Yes, it is the second night of a back-to-back, but this isn't a one-off situation. This is a guy, and I pulled up his career stats against the Raptors. Yeah, but we know he's going to get buckets. There's no one. But on it's, not even, it's not even though. about the points. I just want to tell you, he's 48% from three. Yeah. Jimmy Butler is not a three-point shooter. Not 48. He's 40, not a, uh, he doesn't he shoot ex- threes. He he's like definitely. DeMar DeRozan. Like, he yeah. doesn't shoot threes. He's a mid-range guy. He, mm-hmm. He'll go to his spot. He'll go to the basket. Mm-hmm. He's not a shooter. 48% from three on three attempts a game. Yeah. Come on, man. You know, like that. It's tough. It's tough, and it feels like he has our number. As he's just shy of twenty points, uh, six rebounds, five assists in twenty six games mm-hmm. against the Raptors in his career. He's plus fifty five. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he listen, has the, a, he, he has our number. He's a great player. When you really look at it, he's probably got maybe not those kind of high stats against every team, but he's got stats like that against a lot of teams. And unfortunately, one of them is the Raptors, but. One, another thing is that we were down 15 points in that game. It, it, you could see the heavy legs on them coming off the back to back. Like you don't stand again. You don't really stand much of a chance if you're going to be coming off a back to back with heavy legs and then have a star who can perform like that. 35 points in the first quarter and then boom, 21 in the second. They, exactly. they had those legs and, and the legs dropped off right after what, the first. What I think the biggest thing from this game was, and it was very interesting to see, and and we kind of you know we tweeted about it at the end of the game. We said no Pascal to close that game. Pascal was taken out maybe with what four or five minutes left in the fourth, maybe a bit earlier, but we didn't see him come on and close nope. out that game. And Pascal had a very poor night that game. TD played that, yeah. TD closed that game out, and Pascal didn't have a good game that game because he couldn't really produce against the length and the size of Miami in the paint. Let's talk about that. That's interesting because yeah. he seems to continuously struggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it Bam? Is it the team defense? Because Miami's team defense is top notch in the league. Yeah, there's no question about yeah. it. Miami is going to be a top defensive team. They have one of the best zones mm-hmm. in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just and and we all know Spo. Spo is a genius. They're well knows what he's doing. Yeah, Spo's well prepared. He's well traveled. So what what's this? What is it? What do you think? It, what what do you attribute it to personally? Given his style of play, I, I think it just de- depends on the matchup. Miami had his Miami had his number. They knew how he plays. It's not like. It's not hard to know how he plays. He doesn't have many tools to go to, and he relies on a lot of a lot of on his strength and his length around the rim. So again, I mean, against against uh, the Sixers in the loss, the game before he had twenty two seven and six, played forty two minutes, tired. His kind of game Fair. is gonna need that energy. His kind of game, he plays with his strength, plays with his legs a lot. If your legs are if your legs are are feeling weak off a of back to back, you're not gonna have a great game, and he and that's what we saw. So yep. you combine the fatigue, you you combine. Miami's great defense on him and being able to figure him out. It's going to be a very tough night. So we saw Nurse, because of that tough night, we saw Nurse bench him in the fourth yeah. and to close the game. And interesting to, to add to your point, too, they traveled from Philly to Miami yeah. on a back-to-back. So there's travel involved. There's fatigue. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. He had five points at you know 24 minutes. It wasn't a great game. No. And that's why I don't want to take this game uh, in isolation. But I feel... I feel as though the Heat are a tough matchup. And when I look at the East and the way it's structured, you can very well end up with the Heat in the first round. Yeah. And that's a tough matchup because, A, Jimmy already gives you the fits. Jimmy's yeah. tough. And then on top of that, your defense takes out your 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 max guy, you know, yeah. your best <laughs> yeah. player. Yeah. It's going to be tough to win a series, and especially a seven-game series. Like, he's going to have to come back and, and really make adjustments and – and figure it out. And a, 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 a couple of things from that is just Miami's the type of team to, you know, really plan well and scout very well. So they know that this is a team that, you know, the Raptors is a team that they could see further down the road. So they're probably putting a lot more into the game plan, a lot more into stopping Pascal. And when you're able to stop Pascal, it, it, it gets a lot tougher for the Raptors. The Raptors have a 5-5 five and five record against teams ranked 4th to 10th in the East. And that four to ten bunch has like maybe a game separating them. Like the Eastern Conference race is very tight from from spots four to ten. Mm-hmm. If you can't perform against those elite or those good teams that you're in, you're competing with, especially a guy like Pascal, you can't afford. I, we can't really afford to have Pascal play 
situational games where the matchup is only in his favor. And that's why I think the mid-range jump shot is going to be huge for him when he adds it. The three-point jump shot, when he, when he, when he adds it, it's going to be huge for him because it's going to take some pressure off you know, his legs. He'll be able to not as move as much, you know, conserve some energy. Yeah. But that Miami game, as long, you know, like you said, you can't take it in isolation, but it's a good wake-up call for him. It's like, yo, your moves don't work against everybody. You need something that's going to work against everybody, yeah. no matter their size or their, their, um, their skill. Yeah. Another thing I, I want to address a little bit on here is, have you ever... I don't have a specific example, but have you ever, you know, those situations where like you're trying to tweak something to make it better. Yeah. And you tweak and you tweak and you tweak and it's like, okay, this is pretty dope. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, I'm just going to keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And then it starts to get worse. Yeah. 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 You get too trigger happy with it. I feel like that's what happened with Nick Nurse's bench rotation. Mm -hmm. And he tweaked and he tweaked and he found a really good spot. Mm -hmm. And then he kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And now it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. On the season, they're in the bottom half of benches. Mm -hmm. Uh, just notable teams, you know, that are worse than us in bench production. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets, who have, you know, five snipers in their starting lineup. Yeah. Uh, you have the Lakers, self-explanatory, Memphis mm -hmm. Grizzlies. You got uh, Boston Celtics with a, you know, the great two guys. The Spurs with DeMar DeRozan and a couple of guys there. Minnesota, obviously, I mean, they they suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Miami Heat, you got the starting lineup with Bam, with Jimmy. Their bench is weak. With Drogic. Wow, okay. Jimmy. So... Yeah, their bench is pretty bad. And then Cleveland is like the worst bench, but I mean yeah. they're not that great of a team. But yeah. when you look at the great teams that are less that are worse than them bench wise are teams that have one to two superstars yeah. on their start in their starting lineup, you know, two all stars in their starting lineup. So tough. We have zero all stars this year because we're gonna I go know. through that uh, yeah. in a sec. Um zero all stars uh, on the team. It's tough, man. You need a little bit more bench production. I don't know what it. I mean, Utah was out for a few games. Yeah, that was. We tough. know that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't really understand this whole Stanley Johnson thing. I feel like. Yeah, that I feel was like he confusing. just demoted him f out of nowhere, and there's definitely minutes for him to go around. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So what? What do you think it is like in your in your opinion? What? What is it about the bench? Is it the bench itself? Is it Nick Nurse's tweaks to it? Like, uh, I like where I, are we at? I, I liked your example of saying you when you t you keep going, you tweak, you find something, and he found something good in in a Stanley Bembry, um, Chris Boucher, Boucher rotation. Like he found something really good in that, and then he's like, I'm gonna keep trying, keep, keep trying, trying, and that's what trying. he did. Now I'm seeing you know a guy in Matt Thomas who was at the end of the bench in the beginning of the year start to get into games before Stanley. Yeah. And and play, you know, he's given a chance before Stanley, which you know, whatever, fine, put him in. But you had something really good going with that bench and obviously bringing Baines to the bench and 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 starting Chris, uh Chris Boucher, that also is tough in its own right. You're you're shaking the bench up a little bit. It doesn't have the exact pop that you had with with Chris. Chris walks on the on the court, he's he's energy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like for he, sure. he instills energy and gets people going. So uh, I think he over he just over tweaked it. And I think he needs to go back into how he had it before. When we, and but the problem is now is that you have a guy like Stanley who loses confidence in that. So he's got to find a way to instill some confidence in that that really good bench unit he had. And he's a, he's got he's got he's got to go back to that and be be like I'm sticking with this. Yeah. This is the one I want. Yeah, it's tough. And and like we said, when you don't have all stars on your team, man, uh, it's come tough. On. And, and, Come okay, on, let, let's man. talk about it. Did, did, anybody, did anybody get snubbed? Because like it, the way I look at it, there's three possible options that could have gotten an all-star in terms of who they are. That's Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, and Fred Van Vliet. Pascal, Nobody else in the East? Yeah. On our team. Oh, on our team. Oh, okay, okay. On our team. Okay. Pascal Siakam has not had an all-star type season. I no, think we can all I, agree I, I on agree that. I agree with that one. I think he could agree on that. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry has not had an all-star type season. Mm-hmm. I I mean I don't I don't want to say we can all agree on that because we can't. people think no, I'm really, a hater. Yeah, I just keep it real. Uh, but Kyle Lowry has not had an All Star type season. I'm not upset about it. Yeah, the only guy that you can make the argument for is Fred Van Vliet. Yeah, right. But then you look at the guys that were selected, and then you say, well, did he get snubbed? Because Jalen Brown, James Harden, Zach Levine. Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, yeah, Julius Randle, Nick Vucevic. Listen, uh, we can't even all... compare it to the to the forwards. So let's look at the guards: <sighs> Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Ben Simmons, James Harden, Zach Levine. Come on, listen. There's no snub. There's, there's no there's snub. No, all these players that you named. Call what it is. 
There's all, snubs out in the West. They all deserve to be all stars, but yeah. Do I think Boston deserves two All Star spots and the Raptors don't deserve one? I don't think so. I'll, I'll so, give you that. So, no, I'm not going by player com- comp- comparison. I'm going by you. Also, part of All Star is rewarding teams, and you know, you we see usually the uh, the the first place team will have three All Stars in each conference or in one of the conferences, depending so on who they are. So, with Brooklyn, for example, the Lakers have two. I mean, they only have two. Yeah, right? exactly. But, but as I'm saying, like, but. There will be three given if it's if it's necessary because that's the first place team. So why doesn't that same logic fall kind of all the way down? Why does a team like Boston, who especially as of you know the second half of the season, so up to to date has been struggling, and their players have been struggling? Why does why do they get the nod for two for two All Star spots and Raptors get zero? Look, I think I think Jalen Brown deserves it. He's had an All Star season. He's taken a huge step up. So I'm not upset about him. I'm not upset. I think Jason upset. Tatum is a name selection. Uh, but I don't think that – see, like, if he was out, I don't think that it would be Fred Van Vliet instead because it was between him and Chris Middleton, and that's on, on the Bucks. And if you want to talk rewarding, that's 50-40-90 on the season. He's very efficient. He's having a great year. You got to give it to him. Fair. But at the same time, my, my point still holds about Boston is that sure. I don't think they have two. But I mean, I, man, I hate Boston, so yeah. I'm all over it. I'm, and it's I'm not cool. hating. It's just two. You you, you got you, you don't you don't really don't need two, but they or I, deserve I, two or deserve or deserve two. But you know, if if Jalen Brown's gonna get it, I think he's an All Star caliber player. I have no problem with him getting it. Yeah, I'm cool with that. But uh, let's go in the West. Go, inter- go in the West. Sorry. And before we go in the West, interesting takeaway: Miami also has zero All Stars. They haven't had a good season. Because they I mean, have Bam Adebayo. So Bam Adebayo's Bam, had a pretty decent season, and he's been pretty. You know, the only one that's actually stable and playing. Bam has had a great season. On the but. season 20 and 10. Uh, I mean, he's putting 33% from three. is not really the greatest. Mm. But 57 from the field, 85 from the free throw line. They're now sitting in fifth because they went on a pretty good run. Yeah. They were missing Jimmy for a whole month. A while. A so, long while. I mean, so, you want to yeah. give it to Nikola Vucevic, but you don't want to consider Bam. Nick, yeah. Nick has better stats, but you want to talk rewarding teams. I mean, Orlando's in the bottom. Where are they? Thirteenth in the East right now. Thirteen and twenty-one. I'm cool with that. I I have no so, problem. With Bam was an All-Star last year. Yeah, Vooch Vooch is definitely putting up great numbers. Don't get me wrong, but Bam Adebayo is helping his team win. He's putting up a twenty and ten double double. Yeah. So what's been interesting is seeing the new All-Stars love. was new, seeing the new All-Stars this year and Zach. Who who you Julius, got Zach Julius and Jaylen? Uh, and and is Jalen new? Jalen's new. Yeah. Um, Vooch, I think, might be. He's done this no, before. No, Vooch has done it before. Um, but that, what? That's three new guys you've got. So who are like? It's interesting to see who are the three guys who got knocked out. Bam. Pascal. Pascal. Jimmy. Jimmy. Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton. That's a lot more. Dang. Yeah. But I mean, Harden also moves to the west, but, uh, to the east. Sorry, yeah. that happens. Um, and then Trey. Yeah. Trey Young. He he was, I think, an All Star last year, and bam. That's pretty crazy that he's not. I was talking that he should have started. He's not even a reserve. He's not even a reserve. So it's it's interesting to see this season. But I like how Zach Levine, man. He's Zach been Levine's having it, an incredible season. The fact that Julius Randle's an All Star gives me so much bragging rights, so much joy because he's a late bloomer. He's a late bloomer, seventh year in the league. You don't see, you don't really see that often. He's but killing. I rode him for so long. I'm like, bro, don't worry, he's gonna be he's good. Killing and him. for years, you would. Literally roast me, like, yo, this guy is not good. He's, he's not killing, good. and he's, he's killing. killing it. And the Knicks are in like what fourth place right now. So, bro, Knicks, Knicks they're, are in they're, playoff they're top They're top eight for sure, but they have the second best defense. Or yeah, second best Tibbs. defense in the league. Tibbs, and Tibbs, uh, Tibbs has a, like a sixty-three percent winning percentage with D Rose. He only played with D Rose, bro. Man, <laughs> I, I'm crazy. liking that D Rose and Emmanuel quickly still getting minutes. He's still yeah. getting an opportunity. Yeah. <sighs> it's I an interesting like it, team. I, and I, I just got the notification on my phone. The Pistons game tomorrow got postponed. Oh, okay. Great. Obviously. <sighs> he did. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the All-Star weekend this weekend? Or All-Star game this weekend? I think this March weekend, 7th? Yeah. 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 So this is the All-Star break. In Atlanta. I don't think we'll have a game before the All-Star break. Who yeah. knows? In Atlanta. Atlanta. They're not going to have a game before the Thursday, but I think, is the speaking one. Speaking of Atlanta, bro, big moves. Big moves in the South today. Yeah. They yeah. fired their head coach, mm-hmm. community legend, Lloyd Pierce. They they. Woj had like another tweet about him and about his impact in the oh, community. He's, he did two yeah, tweets bro. for he, him. He went on Woj's pod and he yeah. talked about what he did in the community and yeah. he was big in the voting stuff. And Lloyd Pierce, man, canned pretty quick and then replaced with, by uh, his interim, interim. His, well, not his assistant, interim head coach. Sorry, his assistant. Yes, Nate, yes. Nate McMillan, who is has been Indiana a head coach, coach before, Portland, Portland coach. coach. He's Seattle. been a head coach. 
Um, so he's he's a pretty trusted interim head coach. But I don't know about this this firing. I don't really. Let's talk about it, man. I, 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 they're I, bad. They're, they they struggling. They're, they and they have should some be. talent, man. They have some talent on there. Like I know that Bogdanovich is missing, and I know Gallinari missed a lot of games. But at the end of the day, you got Trey Young, John Collins. You got DeAndre Hunter, who's having a great Clint. season. You got Clint Capella. You got a lot of young guys. You know, Kevin like Herter. Cam Reddish, Kevin Herter. Like, yeah. You have talent. You can do something better than 14 and 20 or wherever. They're like 11th or 12th in the East right now. Yeah. So, uh, the way I look at it is, and it, I know it's good, we've come down hard on him this year, but if Nick Nurse had this group of guys, <laughs> oh, he'd kill it. What he would be able to yeah. get done, and I don't want to compare, you know, everybody to Nick Nurse, but what I'm saying is, he has a fair share of talent. Mm-hmm. For people to say, oh, Bogdanovich, oh, Gallinari, oh, Rondo, I get it, they're missing, but he has a lot of talent in his plate, and you got to do a better job, in my opinion. He's been coaching. This is this would have been his third. And or, apparently Trey's upset too. This this was going to be his third season coaching. And when you really take a look at him, man, like, number one, you didn't even give him the full season to, to No, that's to get, true. Come on. Give the dude a full season. Like, you had no reason to fire him really. Mid-season firings don't make sense to me. I, yeah, I don't like that either. So give him the full season. Number two, last season, very interesting season, wasn't weren't nearly as competitive. The first season, didn't. Trey was a rookie. Not nearly as competitive. This season... You know, fine. They could be. They should be a lot better. But this is number one. Is by no means a, a regular kind of season. Shortened games. Uh, sorry, shortened schedule. Um, you know, this whole COVID thing and everything. All the you know difficulties that you have with that. And then at the same time, you get f- a team with like three or four brand new dudes who are good at basketball and they know how to play and they demand minutes. They demand the ball. It's not the easiest of situations to do. So he really only got half Couple a season. Months. No practices too. No, no, no training camp. No, no, no. Um, preseason, short preseason, no practice, no, nothing. nothing. Yeah. So you really look at his tenure there. He got half a season of a good even, team. Not even a good team, but not even real coaching experience. Yeah. And you just canned him. So for me, it was like I think you scapegoated him a little bit. Um, I Trey, wonder. I wonder what that means for Trey though, because they want to make him happy. But does a move like that make him happy? Like that he maybe not have the greatest relationship with the coach. Like uh, for that's what I mean. Like. I feel like because we don't know and we're not privy to all the information, mm-hmm. when I look at a midseason fire, it's, it's gotta tough. there's Sticky. gotta be something. Like there's no way it's just like, hey man, it's not working out. Yeah. Like, do you really even even if like you want to make the playoffs this year, do you really think you're gonna make noise in the playoffs? Like <laughs> with the team even that you make have, it to the playoffs. You know, with the team that you have right now, there's still the top five, six, seven teams are all better than you. Yeah. So why fire him now? That's a good mm-hmm. point. I never I never really looked at it like that. Only, I just looked at it like, you know, he has to do better with the team that he has because yeah. he does have a lot of players and it seems like it's just a, it seems like it's a tryout every night for the young guys. Like which one of you guys is going to get that role uh, as these guys heal and come back. So it's weird. They're definitely underachieving. There's no there's no doubt about that. We were on here hyping about how they're going to make the playoffs this year in the, uh, I was big. Before, I was yeah. high on them, man. Got, I love that. They've got Atlanta. a lot of good pieces, a lot of good guys on that team that can really produce and they seem like they fit it, all, it seemed like it all fit, given the the personalities, given the the, the roles, the game that these people that these guys have, and well, it's, it's half a season, man. Like, bro, Ryan Saunders got three seasons, four seasons out of that Wolves team. Yeah, but they that's fired him. that's nepotism, though. I, I get it, but bro, like this dude, you give him half a season to coach this team. So I scapegoat it, but I think, yeah. um, if if Trey Young is happy or he's upset, and you never really know until you go with it, like. If you if you remember um, when the Bucks want to fire fire Jason Kidd, Giannis went to him like, "Yo, they're gonna can you coach? They're gonna snake you coach? Whatever." And he loved Jason Kidd, and then Mike Boot came in and then made him even better or helped him become even better um, than than Jason Kidd had. So you never really know until you actually go through it. Nate's so are you telling me that sometimes people who've played basketball don't always have it figured out? Surprisingly, not not all interesting. The time. Yeah. <laughs> interesting because I got. I got a lot of flack this weekend because, yeah. I mean, I didn't play college basketball. So, <laughs> I mean, my, my opinion is automatically diluted. But I caught a lot of flack this weekend because, as everybody around the league, I'm sure, if you are on Instagram, you saw the Denver Nuggets yeah. had a an opportunity on a break. It was a three-on-one, four-on-one maybe. It was a four-on-one. Four-on-one, yeah. Yeah, it was a four-on-one break, and they were down – Two. They're down two. And Jamal 
Burn. He's dribbling the ball. Jamal Murray's dribbling the ball. Mm. He attracts the defender. Mm-hmm. And what do the three guys do? It's a wide open lane. They gather around the three at different parts. So Jamal throws it to Composo. Who I love that guy, by the way. Who throw- <laughs> I actually love Composo. He's a little it's- uncle. Bro, if you see his <laughs> highlights on like on, on Instagram, he's the cutest guy in the world. Bro. Yeah. I love that guy. So they pass it to Composo. Composo launches a terrible three. Yeah. They miss. They lose the game. And then there's a iconic picture. We're going to mm-hmm. drop it. Yeah. But iconic picture where it's Jamal and the defender and then the wide open net and three guys are on the three. Dang. So some guy on a Facebook group I'm a part of goes and he's like, well, you got to blame Steph Curry because, <laughs> you know, Steph Curry, he gets the praise for changing the game, but he doesn't get the blame for the this part of it, you know, how, you know, he influenced this kind of change. So I commented, I said, well, why are we blaming Steph if Steph's not on the court? Like, are you telling me because... First and foremost, by the way. He's like, a generational shooter and you try to copy him and you don't do it well that it's his fault? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then I got destroyed allegedly on the oh, yeah. th- on the thread. Yeah. <laughs> I destroy you now. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was an interesting conversation. But I want to ask you, like, do you think Steph Curry should get any blame for the nah. fact that three Denver Nuggets players didn't acknowledge the fact that they had a wide open lane? No, nah, that's uh, is that weak sauce? That's just boneheaded. That, that that is actually weak sauce, man. That's just boneheaded. You're just like you're not thinking and. I, I know I've seen some arguments about these guys being spot up shooters and they're used to going to spot up the three point line in a game, but like, yo, if you can't adjust to mid to to the situation around you or the scenario around you, Michael Porter Jr. had a full baseline cut to the three. Campazo had a, a a little elbow cut to the three. I don't know who the other player was at the top, um, but even him, stay there, it's fine. You attract you attract another defender, and these guys just cut to the three. Even you cut to the three. None of them cut. Sorry, cut to the to the basket. None of them yeah. cut to the basket. I one thing I think that my opinion is a bit different on than most people though is I get it. Those three guys are 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 their primary blame. Like their primary, like that's a boneheaded mistake. You should have cut to the basket. It was right there for you. But I think Jamal Murray like has also a pretty big. Yeah, that's where you and I disagree. I think has a pretty big hand in this because as the point guard, if you're leading the fast break, you're also kind of like. The general that's also telling man like man's where to go. Also, the way you the way you play and way you handle the ball also dictates how you go. So Jamal Murray gets to the three point line instead of hesying, instead of getting the defender and, and driving past him, he steps back and he lets another second defender come, and he's about to get doubled, and then he throws the pass when those yeah, guys don't he cut. Drew the defender so he can open the lane for the three bonus. But would have had <laughs> it would have had what would have had killed him. Because Bradley Beal, if I want, I want the video up. Because if Bradley, if you see how Bradley Beal came and closed out, that was by no means a closeout where Jamal Murray couldn't get past in an instant. Like it okay, was a weak. That's not, that's not it the was, point, though. But I, I, listen, I get it. I'm saying it's not primary blame, but I personally he think... he shouldn't even be tertiary blame. I think he. I think he should be tertiary blame. No I think way, he can man. Catch blame. There's he can three catch boneheaded blame. guys on the. I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with that. But at the, as the point guard, as a person that is responsible for. Leading that break, I don't. He think attracted he, the only defender on the court. What bro, else is he supposed to do? But that closeout wasn't even good enough. He had given up before the defender even got there, bro. He created That's an another opportunity thing. for a wide open layup. There's no better. There's no higher percentage shot than a wide open layup. And I understand. Job and he could have taken that an offense. He could have taken that wide open layup himself as well. Bradley Beal's closeout was then, not a guy stepped anywhere. Out in front of him. At the end of the day, at least a human was in front of him. These guys, Fair. yeah, I, I, I'm agreeing. These with guys were picking point. their noses. Yeah, their their primary blame. He's for tertiary. That's what it is. And the fact that this guy had the audacity, the audacity to say to Steph, blame Steph Curry. Curry. Yeah, Are I don't you understand kidding that. me? I don't understand because Steph, yo, listen, like Steph's said, a champ. <laughs> Steph is the only person who can really shoot at that clip. Damian Lillard, maybe. Trey Young is on that on that trajectory, but only, only Steph Clay. There's four, three, four guys that you can name that can shoot like that, and you're blaming a whole team for designing their whole offense, and the whole NBA really designed their whole offense the same way. Steph Curry has never given up an open layup for a three, bro. Like people, he didn't walk in with picket signs like threes for change, yeah, threes for bro. change. Like no, bro, no. he just came in and did his thing, and they're like, hey, wow, threes are worth more than twos. Who knew? Everybody, let's changed. let's change our whole offense yeah. around it. Now you you boneheads don't understand that. There's a certain amount of time left in the game. You're down a certain amount of points. This is a two. This is a three. It's wide open. Surprised, like, man. You're professional basketball players. You know, like, I don't want to. That's why it's even more accountable. Michael Porter Jr., I kind of understand. Not under, not that I'm, like, taking away the blame, but, like, 
he's young. Like they don't think like that. Like I got Campazzo though. You're you're a vet clearly, bro. <laughs> Campazzo's <laughs> just the two point oh Pablo Prigioni. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> legit. Like yo, he's probably like thirty years old. Like yo, you probably played so much basketball in your life. You should have known to just drive to the paint. You know what I mean? Like, like yo, come on. There should have been there. It was it was just a simple move that they could have done to literally. Bro, he's get 29. The he's 29. See, I knew he was. Th- I knew he was 30, bro. I like. I knew he was right he's there. 29. He's 29. He's played a lot of years. He's probably. He's your. He's Argentinian. Oh, he's played pro- professional since he was 14, probably. Yeah, yeah. So his half his life is professional basketball. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't know to cut to the basket. That's what hurts the most, I think, in my opinion. But still, Bone had to move all three. Jamal, I'm giving you a little bit of blame. That's There's no doing. way Jamal That's gets what I'm doing, no blame. Bro. No. That's There's what I'm no doing. way. There's no way. That was a terrible closeout. I need to figure out who that third guy is because. That was just boneheaded. Um, <laughs> I mean, and and I don't think there's other things to talk about in terms how, of Denver. How about, how about how about him tweeting Jamal Murray tweeting that picture? Yeah, that was weak, this, bro. This that angle. was weak as hell. Yeah, I don't that like was that. that was such a weak. That was so weak. Yeah, that was bad. Like you can't you can't do that in my opinion because a Jamal Murray you now you're playing very well, but dude you were. Reducing the bet all season, like no, <laughs> and nobody took to Twitter and been like, "Oh, look at Jamal's averages. Oh, he's down. Oh, where's Bubble Jamal?" Nobody. Yeah. yeah. But now you're gonna put that on Twitter and be like, "Oh, wow, come on, man, you're airing out the dirty laundry." Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. That, come that was on, cool. like, that and was you're cool. the leader of the team. He tried to take it like like responsibility for it know. in the interview, which I still, was like, like to make I up for it. I still definitely want Jamal on on the podcast here, but like, dude, <laughs> I I gotta keep it real. Like, he's got. You can't do that, man. Yeah, like that's, that's yeah. pretty rude. And he's a, he's a leader of the team too. You Canadian, bro. Like you should know that even better. <laughs> yeah. Did you We're see nice the video that. of Richard Jefferson messing with him on? Uh, yeah, I don't. Was so cringe. Bro. I don't understand it. I I don't like. I don't really get what. I don't. Rich, I don't know if I love Richard Jefferson. I, yo, as a he's a good entertainer. Nah, but he's a, so weird, man. As a commentator, like, he's actually really good to listen to. Sure, like, absolutely. For play by play, he's really really. Good. And he's like low key hilarious, but he's yeah. just so weird sometimes. I'm yeah. like, are you being real or are you joking? Yeah, I don't understand that video at all. Are you trolling? It was kind of weird, but yeah, taking it to Twitter, I wasn't a big fan of that. I didn't think it was necessary. You're the leader of the team, mm. um, whatever. And he, he like fake blamed himself at the end. It was yeah, kind of funny, yeah. but. Another questionable move that happened uh, happened today, I think it was. Victor Oladipo, or no, yesterday maybe. Victor Oladipo turns down a max extension of two years, $45 million yeah. from the Houston Rockets. And that was after turning down uh, $100 million from Indiana. Yeah. Sources say he actually hates money. <laughs> Yo, that's the thing. <laughs> we always get on guys for... Loving the money, Giannis. You took the money. I was money. just thinking came about to... that today. And we will come but up here and be like, Yo, the money. It's situational, though, man. He can't you even think? play two games in a row. No, come. On. I mean, like he's still like, he's playing injury well, though. prone. Yeah, man. for he's sure, for prone. sure. His production is really low right now. Like yeah. it's not really a thing. Yeah, and but he's turned out two max extensions. Like I you don't get think it. you don't think he'll get a max at the end of this year. I, he has to have something in the works. He has to. He's probably talking to Pat Riley right now. Two meters, 45 mil, bro? Can you imagine him in Miami? I think is exactly what they're missing. That's the team that Because they're, they're like shuffling between like the Drogic, the Kendrick Nunn, like the other guy. Yeah. Man, you put you put him in there, and I think that's where he wants to be as well. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to hold him accountable, make him fit. I think it would be a good fit, but dude, talk about bet on yourself. This guy yeah. takes it to another level. Yeah. Like I'm not going to blame him. Like. It's his decision, his life. Yeah. He has millions of dollars. He's already fine. Right. Um, but talk about bet on yourself, man. Hey, he thinks For he can do it. For a guy with injury history like that, like that is, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Uh-huh. And Nerlens Noel comes to mind because he turned down the 70 mil from Dallas. Right. And his agent just came out a couple of days ago and confirmed it. Uh, so he turned down the 70 mil. But, I mean, Old Depot's in a different boat. Yeah. Hopefully he gets that contract. Uh, another one that comes to mind is DeMarcus Cousins turning down two years, 40 mil. Uh, like a month before tearing his Achilles. Nah, that's freak. Tough, that's freak. Tough, you, know tough. I mean? you can't even expect But you never that know, happen. man. You're a professional I know, athlete. I know. That's, that's what I mean. Like, you turn down 100 mil, you turn down 45 mil. Like, you better hope to God that you, you bet properly because that's that's tough. But good on him for, for betting on himself, I guess. I hope he You don't want to tie it. yourself down yeah. to something you don't want to be in. One thing I actually wanted to just bring up, and I just because I've been seeing a lot of. Um, rumors about the big men. About you know, I saw a Drummond today that the Lakers are interested in him, but it has to be a buyout market. Everybody, obviously. the Lakers are interested in yeah, everyone. Yeah. They're interested um, in Cade Cunningham next year. But, <laughs> but I also saw, <laughs> I also saw them interested in in Hassan Whiteside. And I was thinking, 
listen, if we're willing to take a chance on DeMarcus Cousins, if the Raptors are willing to take a chance on DeMarcus Cousins, are you also willing to take a chance on Hassan Whiteside in the buyout market? He gets bought out by the Kings. You get him for a minimum. I would be. I will be willing. For a minimum, I'm taking that Look, chance. Anyone is better than Aaron Baines. Yes, yeah, there we go. There we go. I got there anyone go. is better than Aaron Baines. I'm not saying Hassan would be the perfect fit. I don't know because he literally can't space at all. Yeah. Uh, terrible shooter. Very, very, like, mediocre defender. Poor attitude. Slow on his feet. Yeah, he, he, when he wants to play, he plays, but he has a uh, poor attitude. That's the issue, Yeah, too. it's weird. It's yeah. weird. I don't know. Hassan's a weird one. And we actually used to have Hassan. Well, he started his career with the, the Raptors, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. So. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I think before before we end it off is yeah. uh, crazy collapse last night. So first things oh, first. Right. Wow. First things first. The Charlotte Hornets are everything that we wanted them to be. And more. The Mellow Ball. They've, they're they're balling. The Mellow Ball is the next superstar. He's you know Bill Simmons said it best. He's like, the Mellow Ball is gonna be LeBron to my kids. No way. What? In terms of marketability. His name, his recognizability, possibly, yeah. They're like they're putting in, in those terms. Sure, he's okay. Like, he's like anyone in the world. Throw him on your ads. Throw his face there. Yeah, That's what you want. The market, like Lamelo Ball, right now is taking over that market. He's mm-hmm. 18 years old. He's a stud. Yeah, and he's putting up 20 and like eight assists. Like it's nobody's business. That's not. Those aren't his averages. And he's but shooting well, man. He's shooting well. His teammates like to play with him. He seems to be having a good time. I love what they're about. PJ Washington, Miles Bridges. Um, just an exciting young group, and Vontae Terry Rozier Graham. having a great season. Uh, Gordon Hayward having a great season. Yeah, we Gordon's all knocked well. MJ, and uh, I know we talked about this on the last episode a little bit, but the Kings and the Hornets last night, they were the Kings were up eight with a minute left. Uh, yeah. Talk us through what happened, man. What the – like what? This is exactly what I think the Raptors strive for every game. Yeah, for <laughs> – and, and it, for, like I, I was seeing a bunch of things, a bunch of things saying oh a meltdown a meltdown I thought when I was look like gonna you know watch it I thought I was gonna see it eight zero run bam that's it they're done but the the Kings did a they tried to fight back but they were just the Hornets were so good like again, like in in that final minute they were just shooting threes hitting um, Malik Monk has been having a great great last couple he, weeks he had that great uh, and one game winner for them and at at the end of that stretch you you foul Terry Rozier at the three point line he hits all three. Right before that, he hit it, or somebody else hit a three. PJ Washington. Um, and then just hitting he threes, had hitting threes. Points last night. Career yeah, high. career high for him. That which is like crazy. Anybody can pop off on this team. So, and then no matter what would happen on one end of the court, the Kings would just go back and hit a try to go for a layup or hit a two. It's like, yeah, you don't have you don't have this kind of time right now. So, it was interesting to see the defensive breakdown and how poorly they defended. Um, it just they just seemed like they, they were all in shambles. It was a classic. Like, it, it was a classic, classic meltdown. Sacramento King meltdown. And if you're the Rap- if you're a Raptors fan, like that's what you want to see from a from your team, that Hornets team, how the way they fought back and the way they defended in that last minute, and the way they were able to hit threes and get to the bucket and ones. Everything was a three point play at, of some sort. And how do you how do you yeah. hold an eight point lead like that? Yeah. So it was crazy. No, for sure. Um, before we actually officially end, we totally forgot to talk about the Western Reserves. <laughs> uh, now that I pulled it up, I was, like, I was like, yo, we totally skipped over that. So mm. AD, Paul George, Rudy Gobert, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Chris Paul, Zion Williamson. I think my only issue here is Zion Williamson uh, because this is just a clear – and this the NBA, this is their golden child. They're making yeah, it very obvious and clear. They don't really care. Uh, they let them in last year into the but they only allowed those teams in just so he can be there yeah. for marketability. And that comes back to the Lamelo Ball point. These kids are the marketability to these kids, the recognizability of the faces to these kids is insane. Mm-hmm. Zion is a household name now. Yeah. Lamelo Ball is a household name. And Lamelo Ball is fantastic. So um my only thing there was Zion. Uh Devin Booker ended up getting in instead of AD, which he deserved more. Than which Zion, he deserved more than Zion and CP. I like that in there because what he's done to to Phoenix is yeah, I like just, that. I'm you know, taking them. They're like the fourth best defense, fourth in the West, twenty one and eleven. Like it, this is a joke of a franchise that he's turned around instantly. Brandon Ingram didn't make it. Who made it last year? He's another one of those guys who got knocked off, and it's because of Zion. Zion, so, yeah, that's rough as a teammate. I mean, they're That's not rough. winning though. They're like they shouldn't even have one, but they yeah. definitely shouldn't have two. Yeah, I know, hundred percent. I agree with that. Catapults on yeah. in there, so uh, nothing to take away there. Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell. You got to give the Jazz a couple guys. You have to. They're the best team in the league, and yeah. the Damian Lillard is just a fantastic MVP candidate. So, uh, shout out to those guys. Congratulations on their 
Uh, it's congratulations on how many firsts we got. Zion first time, Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, Julius Randle. Julius Randle. Yeah. Shout out to these guys on their first All Star. Uh, thank you guys for listening, supporting, sending in questions. Uh, we love to to bring this to you, so we'll come at you next episode. You know where to find us: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, everything, uh, the whole nine. So take it easy.